Hi, this is Max. How's it going? To say it's been a while would be an understatement. My last video upload was almost seven years ago. And to be honest, this is about the cadence you can expect from me. In that video, I printed and tested two turbines. Poorly. At the time, one was the gold standard for DIY vertical turbine blades called the lens. Please don't fact check that. I'm sure I'm wrong. And the other one was called the jellyfish for jellyfish reasons. If you can't see the resemblance, feel free to say so in the comments. Now, obviously, the lens blade is going to work good. You can tell by the way it is. It's all scoopy and swoopy. The jelly boy over here, though, not so much. It's got like a bumpy bit up front and a dangly bit in the back. And then around here, it looks kind of like someone's kid got a pair of scissors and just started chopping. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is this thing does not look like it should work. That's where this starts to get interesting. The fluid dynamic simulations that SJH7132 did says that it might. And in my previous video, I did show that might be true. The problem with the previous video I did was pretty much all of the previous video I did. Not the least part where I said Bukhari. And for that, I apologize. It was seven years ago. I'm a different person now. And I would never say Bukhari in a serious scientific documentary, which this is not. Right. We're doing some science with air and turbines. And I have built a wind tunnel to finally give the jellyfish turbine a proper test. I hope you're all excited for this, because if the previous video is any indication of how this will go, you're in for a wild ride. Okay, last time I put literally no thought into how I would even test the Jelly Boy. I didn't even consider that I should compare it to another blade. Well, until I had already built the Jelly Boy. This time, I've remade both, I've made them bigger, and I've upgraded my 3D printer with something cheaper but surprisingly better than what I used before. It's an Ender 3 and it does a great job. The next thing I did poorly was isolating variables. And to be fair, I did say I had no idea what I was doing. And I still don't. I'm kind of relying on those of you who do know to help out in the comments. Now that I've shifted all the responsibility for my failures onto you, I'll continue with my plan. Variables. And how I'll attempt to isolate them. I've created a maximum swept area in which the turbine must fit when fully assembled. A standard turbine spar. I don't actually know what this is called, but it's this part here. And it also has a couple of index holes, so I can't screw up mounting the blades. The wind tunnel. Before, I was holding the turbine blades with a drill bit in front of a fan, which was genuinely dumb. There's just so many things that could have influenced what was happening. And finally, measurements. I bought an anemometer. To measure wind velocity. But I decided to use a manometer instead. I also attempted to build a dynamometer using a BLDC motor and some resistors. That didn't work. So instead, I bought a cheap, low power generator from the internet store and an electric load tester. There's probably a million other things I could do better, but I think this is a great place to end the video so I don't have to address any of them. Okay, bye.